Hi, and welcome to module three of the Introduction to Dask tutorial, in which we'll talk about processing array data with Dask Array. In this module, we'll start by talking about when to use Dask Array. We'll then dive into the Dask Array syntax, perform some computations with the Dask Array library, and end with some performance tips. I'll be working through a Jupyter Notebook that you can access at this link. All right, so I've got the Jupyter Notebook open for module three, Dask Arrays. And just like we saw in the previous module with Dask DataFrame, Dask Array provides a parallel, larger than memory implementation of NumPy. This means that it will look and feel a lot like NumPy, but won't suffer from the same scalability limitations. So just like we saw with Dask data frames, which are cut into partitions, a Dask array is cut into chunks. So we take a large array, cut that into smaller bits, and each of those bits is actually a NumPy array, which means that Dask array is performing NumPy operations on NumPy objects under the hood, which is why this will feel and look so familiar. In this notebook, we'll start by building some understanding about how Dask works with these chunks of data, with something called blocked algorithms. We'll then use Dask Array to analyze a large data set in parallel using the familiar NumPy API. So let's talk about blocked algorithms. A blocked algorithm takes a large data set, breaks it up into many small chunks or blocks, and performs computations on each of those blocks. For example, let's take the exercise of getting the sum of a billion numbers. We could do this in one go, or to speed things up, we could break it up, we could break the array up into 1,000 chunks, each containing 1 million numbers. We could then take the sum of each chunk and then compile all the individual sums together to get the overall sum. We achieve the intended result by performing many smaller intermediate results. Now let's look at how we can compute the sum over these billion numbers using a blocked algorithm. We will use a for loop to iterate over each chunk, pull out a chunk of 1 million numbers, get the sum of those 1 million numbers, and store that intermediate sum into the list sums. Once the for loop has been completed, so we've iterated over all of the 1,000 chunks, we can then sum the sums to get the total. Because this is regular Python code, this is running sequentially. So each iteration of the for loop is running after the one before it. There's no parallel computation happening here. So Dask Array does something similar. It creates these blocked algorithms under the hood, but then also executes these blocked algorithms in parallel. Let's start by creating a Dask Array from our dset object. We can use the fromArray method to do that. When we call x, our Dask Array, we don't see any of the contents of this Dask Array. This is similar to what we saw in the previous module with Dask data frames, where we get some schematic information about the data, but not the actual data. We can now perform NumPy-like operations on this Dask Array object, like calling sum. And again, this might be an unexpected result if you're used to working with NumPy, because we don't get the actual sum. We just get an object that points to the final result. And this is because Dask operates with lazy evaluation. As we saw in the previous module, Dask builds task graphs that indicate how Dask will, can get to the final result. But it won't actually compute anything until we specifically call compute. If we call compute on result, we will get the sum of this array. Note that this is a far simpler way to get the sum of the billion numbers than what we did up here. And not only is it simpler, but it's also faster because it's executing in parallel. Let's now try to compute the mean of this array. Again, familiar NumPy syntax, just adding the compute call at the end to trigger the computation. We can do the same with the standard deviation. All right, it's time for you to write some Dask Array code yourself. We'll first set up a data set for you to work with, and then we'll give you a few exercises to familiarize yourself with how Dask Array works. By running this Python script, we'll generate about two gigabytes of weather data. We can then load this data 
into our session and store it in the dset variable, which is an h5pi dataset object. Now the goal here is for you to visualize the average temperature on the surface of the Earth for this month of data. This will require a mean over all of the data. To do this, you'll have to turn the dsets object into a list of dask arrays. You'll then have to stack all of these dask arrays into a single dask array along the time axis. You can then compute the mean along the time axis and visualize the results with matplotlib. First step is to take your list of h5pi objects and turn them into a list of dask array objects using the from array function. Take a few minutes to think it through, maybe try out some code, and you can always uncomment and run the cell below to get the solution. Let's take a look at the solution. We create a list called arrays, and in that list, we iterate over all of the objects in our dsets variable and turn each dset into a dask array. Our variable arrays is now a list that contains our dask arrays. The next step is to stack this list of dask array objects into a single dask array with da.stack. Again, take a few minutes to think about this, maybe try out some code, and you can always load the solution. Let's take a look at the solution. Using da.stack and passing the list of dask arrays and specifying the axis, we can turn this into a single dask array. This array, as you can see here, is more than 15 gigabytes in size. So I'm very happy in this case that dask evaluates things lazily because my machine would most probably crash if we tried to load this into memory. Next, Let's plot the mean of this array along the time axis. Giving you a bit of a prompt here, you just have to complete the result section here. And make sure to import matplotlib before you do so. Again, take a few minutes to work through this. And when you're ready, you can load the solution. Let's load the solution. Calculating the mean of an array can be done by calling the mean method and specifying the axis. We can then pass that result to matplotlib to visualize it. All right, and when we run that cell, we now get a visualization of the mean temperature of the month of data that we have loaded in. Great work. Let's end with a short discussion on the performance comparison between NumPy and Dask Array. So we've seen that Dask Array is a parallel implementation of NumPy. And to make that concrete, let's look at implementing the same code in NumPy and Dask Array and comparing the performance. So here we are creating a NumPy array with a bunch of random values. Now when we create this NumPy array, it is loaded entirely into memory. So this will take up gigabytes of memory. We can then compute the mean and get the result, which takes about seven seconds on my machine. Dask array, however, is able to compute the same computation in a fraction of the time with a lot less memory. Because when we create the Dask array, we're only creating the task graph and not loading all the contents into memory. So that when Dask needs to get the mean of the first axis, it can only load the first axis into memory and leave all the others untouched. That saves memory and also makes the performance a lot faster because Dask can process this computation in parallel. All right, that concludes the third module of the Introduction to Dask tutorial. We looked at when to use Dask Array and familiarized ourselves with the Dask Array syntax. We performed a bunch of computations with the Dask Array library and ended with some performance tips and discussion. So what's next? You've now completed three out of the five modules of this course. In the next module, we'll dive into performing machine learning at scale with Dask ML. I'll see you there.